special. <laughs> After seven years playing Debbie Downer <laughs> and other characters in Saturday Night Live, Rachel Dratch has a pretty upbeat attitude these days. She's had a few surprises, bad and good, in her life after SNL. It's all in her new memoir. I love this title, Girl Walks Into a Bar. Let's start with that. Comedy, calamities, dating disasters, and midlife miracle. Hello, Rachel Dratch. Hi. How many people walk up to you? Just what Eric and I did and went, hi, womp, womp. Does Quite it ever few. get old? You know what? I don't mind it because people always, you know, they're always nice about it. So I, you, it's, I'm fine with it. You know what's so bad about that is I've been doing Debbie Downer for so long mm -hmm. when you're having a conversation. I said, oh, don't be Debbie Downer. Mm -hmm. I sort of thought that I had made it up. I forgot <laughs> that you're the one that started that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So here you are, SNL. You write in your book, I love the title, Girl Walks Into a Bar, that SNL is the best job you can have as a comedian because you look back on those days fondly. I oh, bet. yeah, definitely. Well, because, you know, when you're little, it's kind of the dream job is if you want to be in comedy. So um, you still can't believe you're there. Even, you know, I was on it for seven years. I still would walk around like, I'm on Saturday Live. Yeah. Like, I still had those pinch me moments even after years being there, yeah. And then you heard the news today. Oh, did you hear that, that Jason oh, and Oh, I Kristen? wasn't sure if that's true or not. It's, I don't know. Yeah, it? It, it is. It's unconfirmed, but that's okay. the speculation that they, that they may be leaving. Yeah. D would that surprise you? Do you think everybody has a time when you go, okay, that's enough? Yeah, I mean, like, you can't stay there forever. forever. You know, you have to go at some point. So I'm sure you're never quite ready to go, but you got to kind of kick yourself yes. out of the nest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. It's not always easy to kick yourself out. We have right. to. We should. We have to talk to you a little bit about that. The girl walks into a bar, which is kind of what got you to the last part of your title, which is your midlife miracle. Yes. And I have to say, I really kind of love the story about how you became a mom and how you really embraced your little man Eli and and everything that got you there. But boy, what a shocker for you, huh? A total shocker. Well, um, I was, you know. But you did walk into a bar and meet the. Yeah, father I did. of your child. Yeah. I did yes. walk into a bar, yeah. yeah. Um, after all the, you know, travails. Um, yeah, um, well, I was, you know, 40, 41, 42, and I was sort of thinking, you know, I didn't want to have a child on my own, so I was sort of letting go of the idea of having kids. Um, it's official, I can't have children, um, mm -hmm. to quote Debbie Dyer. But, but anyway, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I sort of started letting go of the idea, and um, but then uh, at age almost 44, I kind of I got surprised pregnant. Um, and so it was sort of a, I don't know, big unexpected yeah, life twist. It's, it's the best. No, I'm and, so happy about And that. after SNL, people think, okay, what do you want to do next? You could probably mm -hmm. do, you could write your own ticket, you could go anywhere. And you very candidly and very poignantly write in the book that you're not working as much as you want. You said you spent a lot of days watching Dr. Phil, me too, <laughs> and Judge Mathis, and your phone well, rings. That was before, yeah. 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 <laughs> that was before, before the baby. Yeah, yeah. before the baby. Yeah, yeah. Before the baby, course, before, before the book tour. Baby. But yeah. Um, and the agent calls and he, he says, Rachel, great news. You're offered parts like. <laughs> like, you know, a 55 year old obese lesbian is often the, the part that yeah. I'm offered. Yes. I was getting a lot of stuff like that. Um, and there's not a lot of call for that in Hollywood. So yeah. There weren't, there weren't a lot of those jobs coming. But but um, no, I you know after you're done with SNL, you think like oh movies, blah, blah, yes. blah. and then it sort of was a little bit of a plateau there, and uh, so I was spending a lot of frittering away a lot of time. So that's when I decided to start writing, and actually when I started writing this, I didn't know it was going to be a book. I just started writing these little stories up, but I didn't know where it was going. Like I didn't know that I was going to have a baby later. So it was a right. big plot twist for me and the book too. Yeah. No, but you saw, in your book you said, if you saw me walking down the street, you wouldn't point at me and recoil, but by Hollywood standards, I'm a troll, ogre, woodland creature, or maybe, or mainly a the lesbian. Man, I, thought, lesbian. I didn't like that part, Rachel. I didn't like I you saying that. I don't, see, the thing, I felt like I had to address it because I don't think that about myself, but I just, this is like what I was seen as in the whole Hollywood okay, But scene. that is so not how you want, see yourself. No, that is not, no. Okay. In real life, I'm... Gorgeous Let's talk about 30 yeah. Rock well, I, think I was just going to say, so you did the pilot for 30 Rock. I did the pilot as for 30 Jenna. Rock. As Jenna, yes. Who, people now know Jenna as Jane, Jane Krakowski. Krakowski. Yeah. So when that all happened, when there was this change, what was that like? For, I mean, did it cause any tension between you and Tina Fey, for example? You know what? It was Tina and I worked together for so long yeah. that when I first got that call, I was like, okay, like I kind of got it because the part was... You know, it's, I mean, now we all know it as Jane and how she's created, yeah. but it was this diva, like in the, the pilot, I was supposed to be seducing Alec Baldwin, I felt a little like, ooh, this isn't my thing, you know? <laughs> so I wasn't too shocked. And then she had the parts, the little part, little character parts, and I was like, oh, great, you know, that made more sense I to me. I can do that. But yeah. then what happened was it just got picked up by all these 
media things. So it just became very public, like replace, replace, replace. So that was sort of like more of the stigma than actually. Not the real Because, yeah, we're so used to, once you're an actor for this long, you're used to, you know, showbiz and it's but Rachel, ups you're, and downs. Yeah. You're feeling okay. I love when you said go, we're going in another direction and the second line is away from you because I've had those moments too. <laughs> yeah. But as we sit here today, Eli's mom, you would say, and John, the significant yes. other in your life, you're feeling what, you want to do what? Oh, Feeling Ooh, good. Wanna, feeling good. I don't know. Um, well, I want to do what? Um, I actually just got a, a pilot after all my lamenting of the work thing. Congratulations. Um, so we'll yeah. see if it gets picked up. But it's written by Carrie Lizer, who wrote New Adventures of Old Christine. Yes. So it just happened like two weeks before the book comes out. I get the big job. Good maybe. timing. We'll see if it goes. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank really nice to have you here. Thanks Thank for you. Bye. Thanks. Girl Walked Into a Bar is available now in bookstores and online and definitely worth your time.